Hello, my name is Hantis Farmer. I am a professor of physics and astronomy at Elmhurst University, and I am also an adjunct professor of math at College of DuPage. I'm going to talk to you about why Veritasium is mostly wrong, but not totally wrong, about uh, their uh, last video. Uh, in that video, he talked about having a battery and a light bulb. Terrible drawing of a light bulb. And connecting them with wire that reached all the way from Earth to the moon and back. And the battery and the bulb are one meter apart. Uh, so here are the problems with his setup and what it causes for the explanation. Uh, the problem is it involves a wire so long that the speed of light is relevant to the whole problem. And to deal with that, you really need to deal with uh, special relativity. And in order to really understand how we can be both right and wrong, you really need to go all the way to quantum field theory. In quantum mechanics, without special relativity, everything is a matter of probability, okay? So there is a finite chance, uh, non-zero probability, that this marker will leap into my other hand without anything else happening. That's quantum mechanics. In special relativity, we work under the postulates that the laws of physics are always the same in every inertial reference frame and that the speed of light is the same in every inertial reference frame. So we have a probabilistic, excuse me, no, deterministic uh, trajectory from one point to the other. Now, probabilistic uh, considerations come in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. Quantum field theory takes special relativity and quantum mechanics and puts them together. Uh, now, what makes quantum field theory different is there is no distinction between a field and a particle in quantum field theory. So you can have a photon field or an electron field or a positron field or a field of quarks or whatever. Everything is a field. And when we detect them, sometimes we detect particles. So uh, there's a lot of complicated math, but there's basically just a few concepts I want to go over and put up here on the board for you. One is we work with the uh, uh, a function that shows the uh, energy relationship between these fields, this being the electromagnetic field, that being the uh, electric field. And this being the electromagnetic field tensor, and sidebar, and mu, and mu, psi. Uh, actually, I probably have to switch this and that. There it is. Uh, this thing. There's particles and antiparticles and fields and whatnot. And there's a lot of ways you can work with this using something called Feynman diagrams or whatnot. But it's more to the point for what we're dealing with to look at something called the generating functional. Uh, and basically, it goes as uh, z equals uh, Actually, before I go there, we have an integral over both of these fields. So this is a complicated thing, and then it's an exponential function e to the i, uh, where the Lagrangian goes in here, uh, plus or minus. I always get the simple part mixed up in my head, but for our simple discussion today, uh, it doesn't really matter since we're not going to do all of the math. But then you have uh, your current, uh, 
respect to each of these is going in there like that. And uh, I go in front of all of these. And I think just to double check, like I tell my students, always check yourself. Absolutely certain I haven't left out a sign that can become kind of important. And nope, that's supposed to be a, a positive sign. And so that gives us our partition function. And then we want to calculate the probability uh, that particle will jump from one place to another. Uh, not exactly what this is, but for a simple uh, discussion, it's good enough. That works out to taking some derivatives minus i respect to this. So we're taking what's called a functional derivative with respect to one current uh, and another functional derivative. I know because of these particle-antiparticle pairs here, uh, that switches off like that. So that being positive is correct. And for both of these currents and evaluating it where the currents zero. And going through all this math, all this winds up meaning is you end up with something uh, that uh, taking this derivative of this whole thing more or less works out to uh, I here and I here, uh, we're going to end up getting a uh, negative sign, it's going to cancel out with that. So we end up with an overall negative sign on this, but then we're squaring it. And, you know, for simplicity, skipping a ton of steps. We get to something that says the probability of a particle going from one place uh, to the other place, going across this gap, if that's x1 and that's our x2, for example, is going to be approximately 1 over the distance between these points squared. 1 over the distance between the points squared. So. Let's look at how that, or what that means on a different board here, is with something called uh, the bare charge. So let's say that this charge here is in the battery. Uh, every charge particle, this is a negative charge, will induce a multitude of, in this case, uh, electron-positron pairs around it with the positron being closer to the uh, sort of real particle. These are called virtual particles, and these virtual particle pairs are integral to quantum field theory. And these, uh, this effect extends out through all of space. So, and uh, the result is uh, as you get further away, markers running out, as you get further away from here, the probability of an electron, say, uh, over here, let's say that the, the light bulb is just Let's go really ideal. We have a single electron in the wire 
And what we're looking at is for the light bulb to be on, uh, basically means that this electron gets excited and sends out a single photon of light. So the probability of this electron over here, this collection of electrons, if this is our battery, uh, doing that goes as one over the distance squared very approximately. So if you double the distance, then the probability goes down to one fourth. And if you triple the distance, then the probability goes down uh, to one ninth as much as it is. Uh, now, if this is our distance of one meter, uh, it doesn't seem like it's such a big deal, right? Like it's just certain to go off. But you have to remember, compare this to the atomic scale, the scale that these particles are in, when they're in a wire. So your wire is, again, thinking of it in a very simplified way, many, many charged particles, many, many electrons that are very close together. These are millionths to billionths of a meter apart. This is an entire meter away from this. So because of the inverse square law, the probability that uh, a battery up here, you know, a collection of electrons, all charged up with energy here, and all there, you know, all of their virtual particles around them, these can all, their quantum fields can all communicate much more easily and much more probably, much more readily than the quantum field of this particle over here with this particle over here in our very simplified and idealized light bulb. So the probability that you will get power flowing through the wire at the speed of light as these fields carry it uh, in the wire is 99.9999% with a tiny probability that some energy can just jump through uh, across the gap of one meter rather than going around the entire loop as Veritasium uh, showed in his video. Uh, now, you might object, but in the video I saw the light bulb come on. You gotta remember, that's just a demonstration. He didn't actually run an extraordinarily long wire. Um, obviously not to the moon and back, and not even, you know, several kilometers. It was just, you know, an extension cord and, you know, a car battery and a little, maybe, maybe a uh, hundred feet of extension cord at most, just to demonstrate the concept. Uh, so he's right that fields are what carry the energy because quantum field theory you know, agrees with that. Uh, but he's wrong that wires don't carry the energy because when you really get down to it, both the battery, the wires, and the bulb are all fields. Uh, and it all happens through the wires for the most part at the speed of light. Yeah, sure, you can get a single electron turn on, but that's just very unlikely. Uh, it would be as likely as you leaping from New York to Los Angeles in a single bound. It's much more likely that you'll just walk. 